Hi, afternoon. In this video, I'm just going to introduce you to uh, ropes and pulleys and connected objects. Okay, there's a bit of note taking to do first, so you might need to pause the video as we go along uh, just to get some things written down. Okay, so ropes and pulleys. I mean, obviously, you know what a rope is, but in mechanics, what we say is that you can pull things with a rope but you can't push things with a rope, okay? The posh words for that is that they have tension, which is a pulling force, but no thrust, which is a pushing force, okay? You can push something with a wooden stick, but you can't push something with a bit of rope. It would just go slack, okay? So only tension in a rope. That's sort of obvious, I suppose. Um, now, maybe not as obvious is that when you... Uh, pull on a rope and you put tension in it and you use it to pull uh, an object along the rope can snap at any point along its length it could snap close to your hand it could snap close to the object it could snap halfway along and what that tells us is the tension in the rope is acting right the way through the rope okay every millimeter of that rope is under exactly the same amount of tension okay and obviously wherever there's a weakness it will snap but it, you, you don't just get the tension at the two ends and nothing in the middle it, the tension acts all the way through the rope okay but what we can say is that at both ends of the rope the tension is obviously equal so if I'm pulling something along with a bit of rope and I'm putting a force of 50 newtons then at the other end of the rope there is also 50 newtons pulling on whatever I'm pulling along there's a box okay if I increase my force to 80 newtons the tension at the other end is also increased to 80 newtons and I can move the box a bit faster so tension at both ends of a rope are both equal. Okay, now that's handy when you've got connected objects because that whatever that force is, it's the same. Okay, so you can kind of do like simultaneous equations a lot on this topic. All right. And then one last sort of bit of note taking for ropes, and this is important for the wording of a question. When we describe a rope as light and inextensible, Light refers to it weighing nothing, so you haven't got to take into account that the rope itself, I mean, if you imagine a big, like, thick rope, just pulling a rope on its own would be quite difficult, never mind if it was attached to something else, okay? But we describe them as light, and we also describe them as inextensible. So, unlike with an elastic band, where you can, you can pull something really hard, and all that happens is the elastic band stretches and the object doesn't move. With a rope, once you start moving, everything moves equally in the same way so if one block is accelerating at three meters per second squared then so is the other block if one block is traveling with a velocity of five meters per second so is the other block okay there's there's no difference between the things that are connected by the rope okay then we go on to pulleys now all a pulley is is like a wheel that you pass a rope or a chain over to change the direction of a force okay so there's two common types of pulley. The one on the left there would be if you're trying to lift up something heavy. So as you pull one side of the rope down, the other side goes up. And you can gear it to make life easy, but I won't get into that now. If you go to TechniQuest, there's a lovely exhibition there of like lifting things up using multiple pulleys to make life easy. Okay. Then you've got another pulley system on the right there, where as the, as the block hanging over the edge falls it drags the other one along the tabletop okay and then coming back to what we said about the rope being inextensible when one accelerates downwards the other one accelerates sideways at exactly the same rate their acceleration is equal and their velocity is equal and in the left pulley if one of them is traveling down at three meters per second the other one is traveling up at three meters per second if one of them is accelerating up at one meters per second the other is accelerating down at one meter per second everything matches up okay and we say that the pulley is smooth frictionless and light meaning you don't lose any energy there's no work going on in the pulley it's perfect okay whereas if it was rusty and old sometimes it can take a lot of effort just to get the pulley to turn okay and then what we say is that, and you can see from the diagrams where I've got T marked on both, is that the tension is equal on both sides of the pulley. All right, It's not separate ropes. That's one piece of rope going around a corner, and the fact that it's going around a corner does not change the tension. So if I've got 60 newtons here, I've got 60 newtons there. If I've got 30 newtons there, I've got 30 newtons there. Okay, So that's the note-taking, and then we can start looking at some questions. 
So I've got your little wagon on wheels, so there's no friction. This is just going to roll freely. Okay, we're not going to get into friction in this video. And we've got another block of unknown mass, but we do know that it's accelerating downwards at 0.4 meters per second. And so it's got, a, it's got to have really a reasonable amount of mass, hasn't it, to get moving. And we're going to calculate the tension in the string and the mass of the block. So just from knowing this information, if we add in what we know then, now, naturally, this block would want to fall at 9.8 metres per second squared if it wasn't attached to a rope. So, there must be tension acting upwards, okay, to slow it down. It's not falling as quickly as it would like to, so tension is acting upwards. And the same amount of tension is pulling the block along. Uh, that little wagon on the top because it's going to go to the right isn't it so the tension from the string must be pulling to the right and it's the same okay whatever that is it's the same there's no forces acting left here because we're assuming there's no friction but obviously we have a force here why is it going down because it has weight and that's mg so i'll put 9.8 m in there for the weight and then what you've got to do is just come up with some equations using F equals MA for both objects. So for the wagon at the top, there's only one force, which is T, and it's accelerating at 0.4, because whatever one block does, the other block also does. Okay, so T must equal 8 times 0.4. Okay, so if I'm accelerating a mass of 8, 0.4, then that must mean that the tension in a string must be 3.2 newtons. Okay. Now, if that's 3.2 newtons, then I know that this is also 3.2 newtons. And now I can do the maths for the, the unknown um, mass, m. Now, it's accelerating downwards. So if I take down to be positive, so 9.8m is the positive force. So 9.8m... T is resisting the motion, so that's a negative force. So minus T equals 0.4 m, ma. So F equals ma. Okay, and down is positive because the block's going down. That would make more sense. And then we know that T is 3.2. So 9.8 minus uh, 9.8 m, sorry, minus 3.2 equals 0.4 m. And then if we get the m's on the same side. Of the 3.2 on the other side, so that'll give me 9.4m equals 3.2, and then 3.2 divided by 9.4m is 0 0.340 kilograms. Okay, so there's a simple example just showing you that the tension is equal for both sides of the string, the accelerations are equal when the objects are connected. And just by writing F equals MA for each individual object, you can calculate the tension and the mass. If we look at the next question, now this is a different pulley. This is one where one goes up and the other goes down. And we can calculate the acceleration of the two weights, and we can even find the tension in the string. So pause the video and draw it, first of all, and then we'll make some equations. So I'll do this one in red, and I'll do this one in blue and so if you look at each block this one's going to go upwards and that's because the string the tension is pulling it upwards but you've got weight going downwards now that's mg so 9.8 times 3 is 29.4 and i know before i do any calculations that t must be bigger than 29.4 otherwise it wouldn't be going up would it if I go to the second block, we've got weight acting downwards. Now, this time, mg is 5 times 9.8, which is 49 newtons. So, 49 newtons going down. And again, the tension is acting up because the string is stopping this block from falling. Okay, if there was no string attached, it would fall faster. So, T must be pulling upwards. And now I can make some equations. And this is the same T. So, for the red one. If it's going upwards, I'll take up as positive. So T minus 29.4 in my two forces equals MA, so 3A. 
And then for this one, now this one's going down, so I'm going to take down as positive. So 49 is the force that's making it go down. T is stopping it, and that equals 5A. Now, that's two equations with two unknowns. The easiest way to solve this would be to make uh, T the subject of one of them and then substitute into the other. So if I rewrite this as T equals 3A plus 29.4, and I can substitute that in there. Now we have to be careful because it's minus T. So when I put these in, they're actually going to go minus. So what we end up with is 49 minus 3A minus 29.4, because everything that is T is negative, equals 5A. Then get your A's on one side and your numbers on the other. So if I leave the numbers where they are, but actually work out 49, take away 29.4. So I get 19.6 on the left. That 3A goes over here and adds. So I've got 8A on the right. And to find A, you just do 19.6 divided by 8, which is 2.45. Okay, so 2.45 meters per second squared. What I did, I made an equation for each block. I had to make T the subject so I could substitute it into the other equation and then solve it. And be careful when you substitute it in. I could have made A the subject, but because I was trying to find A, I need to keep A in the equations. So I got rid of T because I was finding A. If I was finding the tension first, I could have made A the subject and done it that way. Now to find the tension, all I've got to do is pick one equation and put in this value of A. So if I go for the red one, which is T minus 29.4 equals 3A, and then we rearranged it to say that T equals 3A plus 29.4, so T is 3 lots of 2.45, add 29.4, and that comes out as 36.75. Uh, sorry, 36.75. Now that's logical because we said T needs to be bigger than 29.4 to make this go up, but it needs to be smaller than 49 because this one is accelerating down. So T had to be between 29.4 and 49 for this problem to work out, and it is. So that is definitely right. Okay, next question. Now we've got two blocks hanging over the, uh, one hanging over the edge. Okay, well, again, we'll assume this is frictionless up here, and we'll put in what we know. So looking at the four kilogram mass, we've definitely got weight hanging down. So that's 9.8 times 4. So we've got 39.2 newtons acting downwards. And it's going to accelerate downwards. I'll call it A. But it's not going to accelerate downwards as quickly as it would naturally. And that's because the rope is holding it up. And then up here on the 3 kilogram mass, there's only one force. It's the tension in the string pulling it sideways. And it too is accelerating with an acceleration of A. And it's actually really similar to the last one. I got two blocks, two equations, two unknowns. So make an equation for each. So if I do the blue one first, we've only got one force. So T, that's our force, equals MA. So T equals 3A. And for the red one, now it's going to move down. So down is positive. 39.2 minus T equals 4A. And this one's probably easier than the last one because T is already the subject. So if I substitute that into there, now again, it's minus T in this equation. So it'll be minus 3 when I substitute. That gives me 39.2 minus 3A equals 4A. And then solving that, 39.2 would be 7A. And 39.2 divided by 7, I'm typing these in live as I go along, is 5.6. So both blocks are going to accelerate at 5.6 metres per second squared. 5.6 metres per second squared. And all we've got to do now is pick the easiest equation 
and substitute 5.6 in. So if we go for the blue one, we're t equals 3a. So t equals 3 lots of 5.6. So t equals 16.8 newtons. Okay. And I don't really get much harder than this. You might have to include an extra force up here if it tells you there's some friction, but all you do is put a minus something in here. So if there was a if there was a 10 newton force there, you'd have 3a, um, sorry, t minus 10 equals 3a up there. And all you do is put the 3a um, plus 10 in down here. Okay. And then the last one for this, so we've got two blocks and you've got a distance here. So there's going to be some suva at the end. So draw it all out when you're ready, press play. This time... Uh, we've got the system is being held at rest, so it's being fixed like it is, and then we're going to release it and see what happens. So, put in your weights and tensions. Two kilograms is 19.6 newtons, and three kilograms is 29.4 newtons. So there's your weights. We've got tension lifting this one up, and tension lifting this one up. The three kilogram mass is heavier. So this one's going to accelerate downwards, and this one's going to accelerate upwards. So T must be bigger than 19.6, but smaller than 29.4. And again, just make equations for each block, and then we'll be able to solve. So for the 2 kilogram mass, up is positive because it's going to go up. So T minus 19.6 equals 2A. And for the 3 kilogram mass, which is going to go down, I'll put down as positive. 29.4 minus T is equal to 3A. And you've done this maths already in this video. We'll make T the subject so we can substitute. So T equals 2A plus 19.6. That means when I substitute it into here, remember it's going to go negative because we've got minus T. So that is 29.4 minus 2a minus 19.6 equals 3a if we tidy that up so 29.4 take away 19.6 is 9.8 move the minus 2a over here and we get 5a and then 9.8 divided by 5 is 1.96 so a is 1.96 meters per second for both so 1.96 and 1.96. To calculate t, I'll use my blue equation here where t is the subject. So t equals 2a plus 19.6. So that's 2 lots of 1.96 plus 19.6. Okay, so times 2 and add 19.6, 23.52, which as I said at the beginning is more than 19.6 and it's less than 29.4 so that's a good answer check in so we've done that and we've done that and now it's calculate how long it takes for the three kilogram mass to hit the floor now there is an assumption here that the two kilogram mass doesn't hit the pulley before the three kilogram mass hits the floor so this distance must be bigger than 0.8 meters otherwise this would crash into there and muck everything up so for our three kilogram mass, the one that's going to hit the floor, we started from rest. We're accelerating at 1.96 meters per second squared. And the displacement that we're going to be covering is 0.8. And we want to find the time. So if I use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, I mean, you could find V first and do it that way. So 0 0.8 equals, now u is 0, so you haven't got to worry about the ut part. A half of 1.96 is 9, 0.98, so that's 0.98t squared. Okay, I've done half of 1.96 times t squared. Then it's 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.98 to get rid of 0 0.98. So that doesn't come out very nice, that's like 0 0.816. Then if we square root that, you get 0 0.904 for the time. 0 0.904, that is the three significant figures as is standard 
for final answers in mechanics. Okay, and that actually covers most uh, questions that you'll see in the in the first year of mechanics that involve ropes and pulleys, either one object on a tabletop being pulled along by one that is falling, or one which is falling, another one which is raising. The methods are the same. You do a force analysis on both objects. Remember to include weight and tension. Do F equals MA for both objects. You'll have two equations. So substitute one into the other, and then you should be okay, because that'll give you A, and then from A you can find T.